Good morning, brethren, sisters, and church of the living God, hello. <sighs> please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along. Be a Berean. Don't just sit there on your duff doing nothing. Please get the authorized version of the scriptures yourself and follow me along. The two people we're going to be looking at today, well, this guy I can't really speak about because uh, I've only watched a few of his <laughs> things, but these guys, these people don't encourage you to follow along. Okay? This guy might, but this guy... Eh. But anyway... Follow me along in the scriptures. Check me out. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we are going to be looking at. Follow me along. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove or anything like that. Okay? And if you have a question about context, you know what? Pause the video and search the context. Search the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so, people. Be a Berean. Okay? One of the signs of a ministry that is in league with the Vatican, Satan, is, oh, sure, like Catholics, they say, oh, yeah, go ahead and read your Bible. But be careful, don't read it too much, because you need to come to us for us to interpret it for you. Follow me along, okay? Now, we're, we're not, we're not going to have this stuff up for the entirety of the video, because we've got quite a bit of stuff we're going to go through today, but this thing about signs and wonders and people like this individual, the great day of the Lord is near. A brother of ours, a friend of mine, um, let me know about this guy, and um, you know, yeah, okay, now this is his home thing, okay, you look at, look at his channel, Okay, um, and there's the authorized version, Holy Bible Book of Genesis and the Gospel of John, full movies and oh, and all this stuff. Yeah, 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 blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That's a Vatican uh, reading. But um, look at his videos. Look at this individual's videos. Check this out. Okay. Uh, check this out. <laughs> the rapture. Son. There is no rapture. There's a redemption of the purchased possession. There's the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. But there ain't no rapture. Find me rapture in the scriptures. <laughs> Find me a rapture in a Bible, even. Ah. But, okay. Oh, words, uh, remember, words aren't important only when they, only when you say they are not or are, right? <laughs> and then you speak against uh, using a certain word, and then you go around and continue to do so yourself. Ugh. Never mind about that. But, the rapture will happen on the third day after the 2,000 years. Uh, rapture, when you see I ran in vain. Look at this. Look at what this guy's channel is all about. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4, top three signs. Hmm. Oh, okay. At, ah, here, wait, look at that. Revelation 22, not King James Version subtitles. Huh. So, so this guy puts on the front that he's for the authorized version, and he probably, and the one videos, uh, the one video that I saw that he actually read out of scripture, he did use the authorized version. But yet he's promoting the Vatican versions. And also, what is he doing? All about signs. Uh, look, look at this. Uh, Gospel of John, chapter 20, NIV subtitles. Uh, yeah. Uh, whoops, excuse me. Now get out of there. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Um, what is the word of truth? <laughs> this 
guy here, this guy here, first of all, in the authorized version of the scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on to fables. Now, the redemption of the purchased possession is not a fable. No, it is not. Absolutely not. No, the redemption of the purchased possession is going to happen eventually one of these days. When we don't know, we know it is imminent that it's going to happen. When we do not know, okay? But see, guys like this and the other devil that we're going to be looking at, this guy here uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 7, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. You, you look, you look, you look, okay? You look, N, uh, NKJV, okay, and NIV. This guy is promoting Vatican versions, okay? Not even my deadliest enemies who work for the Vatican will put uh, Vatican versions on there, on their channels or anything like that. Okay, not even my bitter enemies will do that. Okay, but this guy does. All right. And also, too, in Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10. And, I, and uh, to be honest with you, I don't even know if this guy rightly divides the word of truth. So I'm not going to be too harsh on him. But when you got somebody whose sole purpose is trying to guesstimate when the redemption of the purchased possession is going to happen and it's all about signs and wonders. You look for these signs, look for these signs. That ought to be a red flag onto you for someone that you need to avoid. Why? Well, first of all, in Jeremiah chapter 10, which only could be used in a certain context, there's no instruction in righteousness for us today in Jeremiah chapter 10, especially verses 1 through 4, because a certain individual says so. Ugh. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. See, this guy here in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, this guy here who is all about trying to guesstimate when the redemption is going to happen and looking about signs and wonders, okay, blah, 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 blah. He might even say, well, no, uh, in keeping an eye out for this, um, I'm encouraging people to to be witnesses. No, no. See, this guy is doing this in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 4. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, and the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. There it shall be. There it is. Okay? There's no guesswork. That, the tree fell there. There it is. Okay? There it is. Okay? He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. This guy has people uh, paying too much attention to worldly things, looking for signs for when certain things are going to happen that might trigger the, as he says, rapture. This guy is uh, promoting um, slothfulness. Yes, yes, he is. Look, look at his stuff. Look at what he's all about. Signs, guessing when the redemption of the purchased possession, using better conversions, okay? This guy is, look at that, look. This guy is promoting inactivity. The Titanic is sinking, okay? Are you going to be one that keeps shoveling coal to the boilers to keep it afloat as long as it can go? Are you going to be looking, oh, Oh, hey, where, where's the ship that's going to save us? When's that coming? When is that coming? Okay? Got to watch out for guys like this, brethren. And these types of people, 
um, these types of channels have been around for a long time. But as we continue, as we progress further and further onto the time when the redemption of the purchased possession will happen, these guys are going to get worse and worse and worse. When you come across a channel whose only purpose is this, danger, danger, get away from them. And besides, th this guy is not promoting the scriptures. He's promoting uh, Vatican versions, okay? So watch out for guys like this one. And also, unfortunately, you got to address this guy again. And then there's this guy, okay? And then there's this guy. I really am reluctant to do, to put this fool devil on anything that is being done because this man's disciples are some of the most willfully ignorant and annoying people that you will ever come across. Okay, last night, one of this man's disciples uh, on a video left a comment and I deleted the comment and blocked the individual. I don't got time for people who don't want to know the truth, okay? If you are ignorant, not knowing better, but want to know the truth, fine. But if you are willfully ignorant and don't want to know the truth, okay, then go away, okay? This devil, I, I've talked about this guy quite at length. Uh, he has almost a half a million subscribers. Number one, that's got to be a warning to you. This devil has been rebuked and exposed. He's wicked. Okay, he's taking people under the law, he's against the once saved, always saved, and he's against the redemption of the purchased possession, and he's a liar, he thinks, and I really believe he thinks he is an actual Hebrew, Jew, he isn't, okay, he's a liar, okay, but one of his disciples made a comment on one of the videos uh, last night, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being ignorant, this man encourages ignorance of scripture people his disciples will oh it's because of him i got a bible <laughs> but does he teach you out of the scriptures no what does he do he flashes things at you for 15 minutes okay and it, look at that his length of his videos are such to incorporate the fact that lost people can't handle too much okay his videos are done purposely at a 15 minute mark to and to encourage laziness because there's no substance. He flashes scriptures at you. He doesn't encourage people to follow along in the scriptures with him. He doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. The Lord has had me to do many videos about this devil exposing him. And his disciples, like I said, are some of the most willfully ignorant people want to be ignorant. They don't want to know the truth annoying people you will I, I have ever encountered okay and not only that this man's disciples are kindredists Brad the, the modern word is racists his disciples are racist he's a racist oh Brad how dare you don't you know that only white people are racist this guy this guy lies, says he's a Jew, a Hebrew. He isn't, okay? And this disciple of his yesterday in a comment said to me, the true Jews are black people. And what was his, his or her proof text? <laughs> this is beyond ignorance. Not knowing better. There's nothing wrong with being ignorant. This is stupid, willfully ignorant. You can fix ignorant. You can't fix stupid, okay? This is stupid. This individual's proof text was in Song of Solomon, chapter 1. I'm not making this up, by the way. You can't make this stupidity up. Their proof text was uh, verse 5. And let's read verse 6. I am black but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So that proves that the Hebrews, the Jews, are the black people. Uh, so being a Hebrew, 
um, is all about skin color, not kindred from whence they came out of. See, this man's disciples are kindredists. They believe because of the color of their skin that they're the chosen ones. Okay? We have talked about what a true scriptural Hebrew Jew is, okay? A Hebrew, a Jew, according to scripture, is one that is taken from Shem, not Ham or not Japheth. He is a Hamite. He is not a Jew. He is not a Hebrew, okay? But see, his disciples who are lazy, they don't rightly divide the word of truth, they don't search the scriptures themselves, whether these things be so, they can only endure 15 minutes, okay? That's it, <laughs> all right? They're the kindredists because of this lying devil. This devil is sending people to hell. But, I mean, this individual said this is the proof that the Jews are black people. Well, with that kind of ridiculous reasonings, what do you do with the uh, Song of Solomon's chapter 5? Okay? What do you do with this? Um, verses 10 on to verse 13. My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. White and ruddy? What happens when you mix white and ruddy together? You come up with pink. So what does that mean? Oh, that the Hebrews must be pink people! This is being, these, this man's disciples, these diehard disciples of this devil, it, it's, it's beyond being ignorant, okay? All right? Yeah, the, the, the Jews are black people because I am black but comely. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. That proves that the Hebrews are, uh, the Jews are black, right? But, okay, with that, okay, uh, my beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. Oh, no, no, the Hebrews are pink people. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. See, that talks about, that's talking about an afro. You, can't, you people, you people, this man's disciples, you black Hebrew Israelites, you are kindredists. You are the racists. You are saying that God is a respecter of person because of the color of your skin. Ugh. Imbeciles. The Lord has had me to do several videos about this guy. This guy has been rebuked. He has been reproved. He has been exposed. But people don't want to hear the truth. They want to have their ears tickled. Okay? His eyes were as the eyes of doves by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fit, fitly set. Yeah. So, which which one is it? Is it pink people or black people? Oh. But see, another thing about this, this wicked devil here. Um, you look at his videos, okay? Now remember, he, he truly believes that he's a Hebrew Jew, okay? He really believes that. And he is promoting... Kindredism. He is promoting kindredism amongst the Hamite people. Okay? He is teaching you. Uh, and there are some of you Hamite brethren out there who used to follow this guy who was like, whoa, who actually Arboreans and actually search the scriptures and actually rightly divide it. They're like, wow. Yeah, this guy is talking about uh, speaking words to no profit, trying to get people back under the law, okay? Yeah, wow, this guy's wicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is, okay? But, okay, this guy, he calls himself a Jew, and he is not, okay? This guy is a lost devil, guiding so many people to hell. Look at his stuff, okay? And I, we've done one video of his, that's enough, okay? All right, uh, eight reasons why God won't answer your prayers, uh, seven signs. Okay. Uh, worship God in the spirit and truth. Yeah. Seven signs of spiritual. Seven signs. It's all about signs. This guy is a Gentile. He's not a Jew. He's not a Hebrew. Okay. He's not. Okay. But again, he's all about signs. Signs this, signs that. 
Seven signs. Seven signs. Seven signs. People. <laughs> look. Look. If you don't know the truth. And you want to know the truth. Here are the scriptures. The Lord had me to do a video exposing this devil. Okay. If you want the truth on this devil. It's out there. If you want to know what a true Jew is. It is there for you to, to learn. To go through the scriptures yourself. It's there. But the, his, this, this man's disciples. This man's devoted disciples. They don't want to hear the truth. And, and one of their favorite tactics is Matthew chapter 7. Don't judge. Don't judge. Don't, you, you people don't rightly divide the word of truth. I feel sorry for this man's disciples. I do. But in the same breath, they are the most scripturally illiterate and willfully ignorant kindredists I have encountered for quite a while. Okay? Avoid this guy. All right? This guy is a devil. And if you are of ham, this guy is not for you. He is against you. Okay? You know what color our Lord looks at? The color red! The color red! The red blood of Jesus Christ! Okay? Uh, but anyway. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. All right. Sorry about that. And listen. Listen. If you are someone who is following Mark the Messenger, okay, whether you be of Japheth or if you be of Ham or even if you are of Shem, okay, if you want to know the truth about that devil, on this video, there's a, on this channel, there are, there are videos talking about, there is one that the Lord had me to do about him specifically, okay? And also there are many videos that the Lord has had me to do uh, talking about what a true Jew is and also videos about how we are not to keep the law today in order to be saved and stay saved. Also about rightly dividing, okay? All right, if you want to know the truth, the truth is out there. Okay, but I'm going to tell you, you disciples of this man, I don't have time for your willful ignorance or stupidity or your kindredism. Okay, I don't have time for it. All right, you want to know the truth? That's a, one thing. If you don't want to know the truth, that's fine. If you want to be disputatious and just promote your idiocy, I'm going to remove your comment and I'm going to block you. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that, especially when much has been done on the subject, okay? But this thing about signs, 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 like the great day of the Lord is near and mark the mess, okay? Signs. Now, like I said, these people that have been around for quite a while, but as I said, as we progress to the redemption of the purchased possession, we're going to see them coming out more and more and more. And that guy, great, the great day of the Lord is near. Could you, can you not tell that that guy is all about getting this kind of stuff and uh, monetization and stuff like that? And I don't know if he's monetized, but I mean, come on, come on. That that guy, the great day of the Lord is near, is is itching people's ears. Mark the mess, same thing. These types of people, these types of channels, these types of ministries, so-called, are going to be increasing, increasing before we get redeemed. Okay? And Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. All right? We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? Remember? We walk by faith, not by sight. The great day of the Lord is near. Mark the messenger. All about science this, science that. Uh, getting your eyes away from the truth and being turned on to fables. Okay? Fables such as you can know when the redemption of the purchased possession is going to happen. Okay? Fables <laughs> that um, Hamites are the true Hebrews, the true Jews. Okay? We walk by faith, not by sight. Those two individuals, you walk, according to them, you walk by sight, not by faith. Okay? Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. We want verses 38 on to verse 42. Matthew chapter 8. 
Verses 38 on to verse 42. Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Now a scribe, Pharisee, especially a Pharisee, a Pharisee is someone who puts the traditions of men above the scriptures. Okay? Catholics. Okay? Catholics. They put script, uh, they put traditions of men, their traditions above scriptures. You read about the Council of Trent. They, they vow to uphold the traditions of Satan's church over scripture. Okay? That's what a Pharisee is. And a scribe is someone who writes down words. Okay? Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas, about the death, burial, and resurrection. The Lord had uh, me to do a video on the sign of the prophet Jonas, which will be in the description box. It's not my problem or fault. If you are too lazy, too arrogant, too much of a kindredist, to search the scriptures whether these things are so. That's not my fault or my problem. Okay? My requirement, my duty ends for those of you who do not want to know. My requirement and duty ends by giving you the truth. If you don't want to follow up, if you don't want to search yourself, that's your problem, not me, mine. Okay? All right? For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. Behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Like I said in the description box, sign of the prophet Jonas will be there for you to all watch and go along in the scriptures, okay? Verse 42. And the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Hmm. And also, also here in Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And when he said that, this was before the death, burial, and resurrection. Doctrinally still under the law because the perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to be made. Okay? So doctrinally, they were still under the law. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth or you become like Mark the Messenger, a lost wicked devil. Okay? But Luke chapter 11, verses 29 on to verse 32 now. Okay? Again, and when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation that seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. But the sign of Jonas the prophet, excuse me. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. This generation, he's making reference specifically unto that generation of Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. But see, today we walk by faith, not by sight. Instruction and righteousness is here for us, which we are looking at this for. Doctrinally, you got to remember, he is addressing the actual Jewish Hebraic people, like in Song of Solomon there, okay? All right? Song of Solomon, by the way, okay, I didn't expound on this uh, uh, while we were looking at that filth, okay? But Song of Solomon is about Solomon, a Jewish king's love for a Gentile wife who was black, okay, his favored wife. For us today, of the Church of the Living God, for our instruction and in righteousness, it, to imply it for us today, it's our Lord Jesus Christ's love for us Gentiles of the Church of the Living God. That's how we intuit Song of Solomon for us today for our instruction in righteousness, okay? It's the Lord's love for us Gentiles who come to him on his terms, who belong unto him, who are of the church of the living God, okay? 
And what we looked at about that in Song of Solomon proves nothing about black people being the true Jews. Okay, what do you do with that in uh, chapter 5? You imbecile. Okay, you sad, deceived dolt. Okay, mm. but, okay, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. This is for our instruction in righteousness. And again, here in Luke chapter 11, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection, still under the law. But see, today we walk by faith and not by sight. Okay? Let's continue. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost part of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Okay? What is this, what is this talking about? Go to Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. We want verses... Uh, 3 on to verse 6. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares, things of the world that choke Okay, like always keeping an eye on the news to see what signs are going to be there or looking for signs that God is going to do this. God is going to do that. No, we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay, thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not Apart from it. Hmm. There is an evil generation that seeketh after a sign. Okay? And for a couple of centuries, actually, now, um, Satan, with his yea hath God said, has brought up a generation of people who, number one, are like the generation today, is the Y generation. Okay? A generation that does not seek the Lord, that does not want to hear truth, but want to hear a subjective version of truth. And over the years, centuries now, Satan through bombardment, constant bombardment, okay? And actually from, uh, what was it, um, 1881 with the West Cotton Fart, with the Blood Cotton, Blood Clot and Fart version of the uh, Greek New Testament came out deceiving people, saying, Yea, hath God said. Okay? Yea, hath God said. And it is through that, yea, hath God said, that these generations have been brought up in. And the result of these generations that are brought up in this, yea, hath God said thing, okay, uh, is the Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30. Verses 11 on to verse 17. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Some of these poor disciples of that wicked devil, Mark the Messenger, um, they believe that God is a respecter of persons because they are black. They are chosen ones. They are the chosen ones merely because they are black. Not because they went the chosen way of the cross, but no, because of their skin color. Because they're, they're kindredists. They're the racists. Okay? They are the racists. They believe because of the color of their skin that they are the chosen ones. <laughs> there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Hmm. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. Huh? There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Hmm. So see, generation upon generation that look and operate by sight. You know, you got to show me something. 
like uh, like our brother Alexander Hartley says, I'm a born, uh, bred Missouri mule. You got to show me something. But see, when it comes to matters of faith, we walk by faith, not by sight. But see, the further we go, the, sooner, the closer we get to the redemption and the purchased possession, these people who are encouraging you to walk by sight, not by faith, are going to come out more and more and more and justify it all along the way and saying, don't judge. Okay? And about the Queen of the South. Well, like I said, the Lord had me to do a video on the sign of the prophet Jonas, okay? Sign of Jonas, which will be in the description box. But what about this queen of the south? Go to 1 Kings chapter 10. Go to 1 Kings chapter 10, okay? You got to remember this too, dear brethren, dear friend. The wicked of the generations of long ago in comparison to the wicked of this generation, specifically. The wicked generations of long ago look at the wicked generations of today, and they're like, wow. What we did was, wow. Wow. What you got, wow. Wow. That's, that's, that's pretty bad. We, what we did, yeah. Yeah. But we, wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's a sign of the times. Sign of the times, which will be in the description box as well. But 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 9. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. Hard questions. To prove him. Okay? All right, she came was like, okay, yeah, God's giving you this wisdom. I'm going to, I want to seek. I'm going to come and ask you these questions. Okay, now let's continue reading. I want you to notice this about this Queen of Sheba. Okay, our Lord said that the Queen of Sheba will rise up with that generation that the Lord was addressing and condemn. The, uh, will rise up with those and condemn that generation. Okay, we already looked at that. All right, check this out. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices, and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. He answered them all. She couldn't, couldn't pull the rug out from under him. She couldn't throw a, a loop around him. Couldn't put a monkey in the wrench. Okay? Couldn't do it. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. Okay? So, did she persist? Okay? This queen of Sheba came to prove Solomon. It's like, okay, I've heard about you. I have heard about how the Lord has blessed you and that the wisdom of the Lord, the knowledge of the Lord is in you. Okay? I'm going to try you. I'm coming. Here, answer these questions. And he did. Okay? He did. All right? But see, Check this out. Verse 4. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built. So when she saw, note that, when she saw, it's like, wow, this guy really fears the Lord. And wow, he really, he really has been blessed with knowledge. Okay, which proceeds from wisdom to fear of the Lord. Okay. And the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up onto the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. What does that mean? She was taken aback. She's like, wow, it's true. As I, as I have heard, it's a true thing. Okay? The Queen of Sheba came not to undo but to prove, and Solomon proved to her, it's like, yeah, <laughs> the Lord has given me all this stuff. Yes, yes. And he proved to her. And upon that, she didn't persist in still repackaging uh, the same question and then throwing it, out, throwing it out at her again. Okay, excuse me. She wasn't there asking foolish questions, not wanting to know truth. Okay, she came to Solomon looking for truth, 
to prove him with hard questions. He answered her. And upon getting those answers, she was like, wow, okay? She didn't persist. Why? Okay? That's why the Queen of Sheba would have con will condemn that generation because when she heard, when she saw the evidence of God in Solomon, when she heard the wisdom, the knowledge that came from Solomon by answering all her questions, there was no spirit in her. She didn't persist. She wasn't there to ask questions to cause trouble. She didn't ask questions whose answers she didn't want to know. She wasn't there posing statement questions just to uh, cause division, to cause strife, to be disputatious. No. She wanted to know truth. And Solomon told the truth. Was it truth about salvation? There's no evidence suggesting that. But, as our Lord said... She came wanting to know truth, and Solomon gave it to her. And in that alone, that she was seeking truth, the Lord said, she's going to condemn that generation. Okay? Yeah. But yet, see, a greater than Solomon is here. Unlike the people of this generation today, they'll ask you a question. They don't want to hear the answer. You answer, they ask again, they ask again. They repackage it, they reformulate it and ask the same question in another way. And if you do answer their questions, they come up with a hundred more, a hundred more. That's when you're like, wait a minute, but you, you don't want truth. You don't want truth. Brethren, like we talked about before in previous videos, these types of people, okay, avoiding foolish questions, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Someone who is foolish is behaving, acting as if there is no God. Those kind of questions we need to avoid because they go nowhere. And they don't want to know. But Queen of Sheba, she wanted to know. And she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. How be, how be it? I believe not the words. Until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he the king to do just judgment and justice. Okay, this queen of Sheba, a heathen pagan king. Okay, this queen, not the king, excuse me, this queen will more than condemn this generation today because a lot of people, not all, praise the Lord, not all, but a majority, about seven out of ten, who ask these questions and you answer them, they don't want to hear the truth, but they just want to be disputatious. Queen of Sheba are going to get just like, hey, well, when I was told the truth, uh, it's like I acceded to it. I acceded that I was hearing truth. These people today, no. No. And also now go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 4. Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 4. And when he had called, oh, not 10, excuse me. Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 and verse 4. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. And considering, and we're going we're gonna to get into this, that what he was doing, okay, okay, but getting a little ahead of ourselves. The Pharisees also which with the Sadducees came and tempting him and tempting desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites. <laughs> Great day of the Lord is near. 
<laughs> ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Then goes on to warn about the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which is hypocrisy, who put their traditions above the scriptures, above what God has said. Okay? Yeah. But verse 1, the Pharisees and Sadducees show us a sign. And <laughs> John chapter 14 now. Okay? That, that's kind of, that's, John chapter 14, verses 10 and 11. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, meaning the soul of the Godhead, okay, one God comprised the spirit, soul, and body. The, uh, the Trinity is... <laughs> the Trinity is satanic. It is of Roman Catholicism. Mystery Babylon, Okay. It is not true. It is satanic, wicked, devilish, okay? There is one God, one God, who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body, okay? Talked about that at length, okay? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, referring to the soul, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Now, consider this. Consider this. All right? The, they and John were, you know, they, they wanted to see a sign. Okay? What we had already uh, read. Okay? They wanted a sign. They asked them. It's like, let's see a sign. Let's see a sign. But considering... Again, considering all that he had done, all right? We, we need to consider that. We need to consider that. Oh, one second. Yes, we need to consider. They's like, show us a sign. And it's like, well, what do you think he was doing all along in healing, healing people? The, the miracle of the loaves and the fishes, raising the dead, curing the sick, Casting out devils. And yet these guys were asking for a sign. Huh. Isn't that something? Hmm. And we just read. Okay. Uh, believe me like uh, John chapter 14 verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Okay. Now go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10 verses 22 on to verse 25. Here we're going to see this again. John chapter 10, verses 22 on to verse 25. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Tell us plainly if you're the Christ. Okay? He's been curing the sick, casting out devils, the miracles of the loaves and fishes, okay? Raising the dead, walking on water, okay? Uh, <laughs> oh, having eyes to see and see not, huh? Hmm? Yeah. And I, I love verse 25. Jesus answered them, you can just sense the oy vey, man. Oy vey. The... Jesus answered them, I told you, oy vey, <laughs> I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Let's read verse 26. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. So he's like, you know, oy vey, I've what do you think I've been doing? But see, they didn't want to see. Like the rich young ruler, he only saw 
a man who could provide his meal ticket and kind of stuff, even though he asked for eternal life. But the Lord's like, uh, give away everything you have and then come and follow me. And that rich young ruler had many riches. His heart was in the world. Okay? All right? And, and skipping here a little bit, uh, go to verses 37 and 38. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. He and the Father are one. It's in verse 30. I and my Father are one. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? He's saying, look. Wait a minute. What do you think I've been doing? But yet you see, you want to sign? And remember, at the cross, when they said, if he be the Son of God, let him come down and we will believe him. If he were to come down in dramatic fashion, hallelujah, and come down, they would have said, he's a devil. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there will be no sign given to it. Why? Because even if they have these signs, are they still going to believe? Are they still going to believe? Uh, go to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Isaiah chapter 6. Lord willing, one day the Lord will have me to do an expository video on this. But Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed. But perceive not. That's exactly what happened when our Lord was on the earth. That is exactly what has happened and is happening now today. People are looking for signs. They don't walk by faith. They walk by sight. And you got those devils like the great day of the Lord is near and the mess promoting the same thing. Make the heart of this people fat. And make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Oh, because you're, you're, you're a special, you're a chosen one because of the color of your skin. You, you, you can know when the redemption is going to happen because of things by concentrating what's on, going on in the world. And all the time that you're doing all this, looking for signs and wonders, um, how's, that, how's that witnessing going? How's that witnessing going? And those of you, the disciples of that mess guy, okay, in your ego, in your pride, in your kindredism, because of the color of your skin, well, I'm black, so you're 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 white. You, what what what? what you, you're not a chosen one. Oh, you can be grafted in, but you got to keep the commandments. <laughs> Come on. The color that our Lord sees is the color red. He is not a respecter of persons today. Okay, he is not today in this dispensation, which you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, he's not. The only color that he sees is red, the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? And because of the yea hath God said, yea hath God said, and these generations being brought up in this yea hath God said, walking by sight, not by faith. Yeah. Yeah. Go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Go back to John. John chapter 12, just two verses, verses 42 and 43. John chapter 12, verses 42 and 43. Uh, on to verse 43, excuse me. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogues. For they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. And that's what it's about. That great day of the Lord is near and Mark the messenger, they're all about the praises of men. 
They don't care about you. They don't love you. They don't want to see you right with God. One's promoting distraction. One is promoting kindred, kindredism. And promoting the law, speaking words to no profit. They're liars. They are deceivers. Okay? And Matthew chapter 23. Okay? Matthew chapter 23. Okay? In the one video the Lord had me to do about the mark mess, the mark the mess, um, uh, in his uh, comment section or the uh, community section, he was boasting of uh, giving praises to people for giving him to his uh, money to his ministry, which is clearly against scripture. But no, people want lies. They want to believe that they're special because of their skin color. But Matthew chapter 23. Okay, Matthew chapter 23, 5 and 7, describing the times before the redemption of the purchase possession. Okay, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. These people make a mockery of God. They mock God. They do. They do. Okay? <laughs> they do. Go, go to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Okay? Verses 13 on to verse 15. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination to the sight of God. How can ye believe, ye who seek honor one from another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? These the men that we looked at at the beginning of this video, they want the praises of men. One's teaching distraction, and one is teaching kindredism, racism, causing division. That's what these guys are here for. And the farther we go, the more pronounced it's going to get. You need to be aware of these things. You got someone talking about, you saw, you can see their channels yourselves. Signs this, signs this, signs that. Stay away from these people, brethren. Stay away from them. Okay? <laughs> All right? Now go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. And this, this is again, and especially in the, these next couple of months, and especially in the Catholic month of December, you're going to see this. Mark chapter 7, verses 5 on to verse 9. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not the disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me, honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Yeah. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things do ye. And also in Isaiah chapter 29, uh, this is what our Lord was quoting. Uh, Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 13 and 14. Okay? Isaiah chapter 29, verses 13 and 14. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, 
and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Their traditions of men. The teachings, the commandments, and doctrines of men. That we can know when the redemption is going to happen. Okay? That you got to keep the law today. Today, in this dispensation. No, you don't. No, you don't. You know what that is? That's, yea, hath God said. It's, yea, hath God said. And that's been happening for centuries. Yea, hath God said. But as we progress, it's getting more and more and more worse. The wicked of generations long ago will look at the wicked at this of this generation and of the generations of today and be like, wow, wow, you, you guys, we, we were pretty bad. <laughs> you guys are worse than us. <laughs> and, that's, and that's scary. That's scary. Now, go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. This is stuff we got to watch out for, brethren. This is all stuff we have to be aware of. Okay? Yes, it was always there before, but if you haven't noticed, it's getting worse. That's why we have to be diligent. We have to be in the scriptures daily. We have to do as the Lord has called us to do. Not to be saved or stay saved. Okay? The Lord hasn't called you into inactivity. Okay? But Luke chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 8. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually, continual coming she weary me. So this woman was getting on his nerves, so it's like, okay, fine, I'll do it. Contrast. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Luke chapter 18. Did Christ die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? Come on. Did he? No. The law was still in effect when he said this. So, doctrinally, they were still under the law. Okay? So, when he says elect there... Under the law, he hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. Okay? He hadn't. So, when he says elect there, he's talking about the Jewish people, the Hebraic people, who come from Shem, not from Ham or Japheth. Okay? He was talking elect there in that context are the Hebraic people, the Jews. The true Jews. Okay? And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Now, when he cometh, he was already there, wasn't he? He's talking about his second coming. Okay? Uh, the redemption of the purchased possession, those who have the true faith once delivered onto the, onto the uh, saints are going to be taken out of here. He who now letteth will let until he, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, be taken out of the way. Okay? And when that happens, oh boy, you Christians are going to go through the great tribulation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? There's going to be a remnant 
during the time of Jacob's trouble, a small remnant that will come to the Lord of the Hebraic people when they see that man of sin, the son of perdition, walking into the third rebuilt temple uh, and his visage resembling, as I believe, the pictures of the Roman Catholic Jesus. And he's going to go in there saying, I'm God. And then some of those Jews uh, in that time period are going to be like, oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Is he going to find faith on the earth? There are going to be some, yes, absolutely, absolutely. But this, when he says, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, talking about his second coming, he was already there, wasn't he? Will he find faith on the earth? What A lot of these people, what are their faith in? They need to be reminded by signs. Their faith is not in what they can't see, but in what they can see. Hence, what kind of faith is that? Huh? <laughs> like that one guy who who's a Christian because the Lord appeared to him. You didn't see the Lord. Okay? You're deceived and you're arrogant about it. Okay? Because God's a respecter of persons, right? Obviously, because if you're black, he's a, you're a respecter of persons. If you have seen the Lord, you're a, he's a respecter of persons. If you speak in blah, 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 he's a respecter of persons, right? Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. Aha! Yes, you were wondering, weren't you? Yes, we had to build up. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 on to verse 24. Different dispensation. Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. On the cross, he said what? It is finished. When he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture, by the death of the testator brings in the New Testament. This dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, when us Gentiles are grafted into the tree of the Jew. That does not make us Jewish. Okay, no it doesn't. Okay, all right. Salvithically, there is no difference. Culturally, there is a difference. Yes, but salvithically, salvithically, there is no difference. Okay, you got to understand that. All right, but this is a dis different dispensation. Uh, today we are saved by grace through faith. Okay, you want to dispute everything that Mr. Mark the Messenger says? Uh, read the book of Galatians about keeping the law. You listen to Mr. Mark the Messenger. He's all about keeping the Ten Commandments. Okay, keeping the law. All right. Paul himself rebukes Mark the Messenger. Okay, God has rebuked Mark the Messenger. He's a devil, people. But you're willfully ignorant and you're racist. Those of you, his diehard disciples. And you're very annoying too, by the way. Try to be patient and kind and um, gentle. But, I mean, there's a point when someone goes beyond ignorance where it's willfully ignorance, and that's stupid. Okay? But, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses, uh, where are we? 17 on verse 24. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Yeah, because the cross is death. Death to yourself. Death to your pride. Okay? It's contrition, ownership, taking responsibility and accountability that you're the one who put them up there. And fear. Fear. Because unless you come to him on his terms, he's going to send you to hell. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved. That uh, great day of the Lord is near. He promotes the non-King James Version and the nutty idiots version. Okay? And those translations are right here. Uh, and you check it out. Check it out. Be a Berean. Okay, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, in those versions it says, are being saved. Being saved. So, 
You mean it's not finished if you're being saved? Yeah, it's are saved. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Okay? For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Yeah, hath God said. Yeah. Yeah, hath God said. <laughs> divide doesn't really mean divide in the Greek. Which Greek? <laughs> the, the Jews are black people because of, uh, look not upon me because uh, I am black. <laughs> like it says in Song of Solomon. Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Because ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Right? Yeah. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Who sees preaching as foolish? We, the church of the living God? No, but the lost. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. So, and, I mean, you, you read in uh, Exodus, and, uh, <laughs> I mean, come on. The Jews, the Hebraic people, required a sign. We today, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Today, in this dispensation, we walk by faith, not by sight. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, called, Jesus Christ, God our Father, chose the way, this is East, chose the way of the cross. You come to Christ on his terms, the called way of the cross. You are the called, okay? Christ, God our Father, chose the cross. That is the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You go to him, his way, the way he prescribed, which is the only way to go to him to be saved. You are the call. You are going the called way, the cross. That's what that means. Okay? It means it has nothing to do with flesh or skin color, birth, nationality, uh, political affiliation, nothing. Okay? Called the cross. Called the cross. Okay? Not the color of your skin, you racist pig. Oh, <gasps> yeah. Call it like it is, brethren. Call it like it is. Call it like it is. But unto them which are called, both Jews of the Hebraic line, called out of Shem, and Greeks, Greeks are Gentiles, anyone who is not of the Hebraic line of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that was called out of Shem, okay? Anyone who is not of the descended line of the Hebrew, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? That's anyone. Us of Japheth, um, those of Shem, like the Chinese, Japanese, those of you of Ham, of Egypt, and Nigeria, Okay? We of Japheth, you know, England, Spain, whatever you want. Okay? Called, cross, called, cross. Get that through your head. Okay? God is not a respecter of persons today. All right? All right? Let's get into it. All right? But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom. Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four. Okay? And like I said, the two people that we looked at at the beginning of this, they walk by sight, not by faith. Look at their look at what they talk about. Look at what they're all about. Okay? 
Signs, 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 signs. Yeah, you're you're chosen because of the color of your skin. And these people have accused me of being a kindredist. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. You come to the Lord broken of your self righteousness, contrition, and uh, you know fear the Lord, call on His name, and He save you. You're my brother or my sister. Okay, this profits nothing. But see, mark the mess. This means everything. Because you got to keep the commandments. <laughs> like I said, there, look, there's one specific brother that I'm thinking about. Um, there, there are some, several who used to follow that guy and who actually went through the scriptures. It's like, wow, okay, you're, you, yeah, yeah. I'm not right. The scriptures are right. I'm not right. It's not me. It's this, the word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? This is absolute truth. The great day of the Lord is near and mark the messenger. They are absolute lies. Okay? But 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 18. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hmm. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, one verse, verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Hmm. And someone's keeping the law. It's a visible thing. Well, I, I, uh, I keep kosher. I keep the Sabbath. Okay. Yeah, I do this, this, and this. I don't worship idols. I, do, I don't do this. It's all outward. Okay. It's all outward. Okay. It's a visible shoe of religiosity, not of the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay? All right? Those who, reg uh, those who regard the clouds shall not sow and stuff like that, which we already looked at. Okay? And also, too, Revelation chapter 2. Jews require a sign. And like I said, that blasphemous lying devil, Mark the Messenger, says he's a Jew. He's not. He's not. Okay? He's not. He is not descended of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not. He's a Hamite. Okay? Nor am I descended of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? I'm of Japheth. Okay? My lineage is traceable to Spain. Okay? But, Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now, a lot of these wicked people out there like to say that the Hebraic people, the Jewish people, are of the devil. <laughs> Go on other... Uh, that. Um, one uh, Odyssey. Oh, anti-Semitism is rampant on Odyssey. Okay. You know, the censorship that we all really love here on YouTube, at least here on YouTube, they crack down on anti-Semitic statements really quick. They really do. Uh, Odyssey, <laughs> it's not the case. Anti-Semitism is rampant on Odyssey. Okay. Ugh. But, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Synagogue of Satan. Uh, that's the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? You got to remember, church is not a building. The only time that you can make an argument that a church is called a building is the uproar at Ephesus. Our brother Alexander Hartley did a wonderful video on that about church churches and stuff like that. And the only time that that could be referenced as a building is into 
pagan buildings, nor are they robbers of churches. Okay? And in context, it's unto a pagan building. So your churches are pagan. So when it says synagogue of Satan, that's reference unto Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And Mark the messenger says he's a Jew. And the scriptures say that's blasphemy. Okay? That's blasphemy. Saying that you is something that you ain't. And Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Uh, yeah, uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Okay? Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, Roman Catholicism, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Now, devils like Mark the Messenger says he's a Jew. Okay? Blasphemy. He's a liar. Roman Catholicism. They do not verbalize we are Jews, but they teach replacement theology that they have replaced the Jew. Hence, they are God's chosen ones. When the Hebraic people descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you do the research, the videos will be in the description box about what is a Jew. You don't want to watch or listen. That's your problem, not mine. Okay? That's your problem, not mine. Okay? But they say that they have replaced a Jew. Hence, Catholicism, they, say, they claim they are Jews, even though they don't verbalize it, see? Okay? Even though they don't verbalize it. And they are of the synagogue of Satan. It's a dangerous thing. The apple of God's eye are, is the Jew. And scripturally, a Jew is someone who keeps the law. And who was the law given on to? Like I said, we talk about that in the uh, What is a Jew videos. There for you to watch and to listen and to read the scriptures through. If you don't want to do that, that's your problem. And about the thing about the signs. Okay, you read in Exodus chapter 4. Okay, let's go there. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Okay? Exodus chapter 4. The thing about the signs. Exodus chapter 4. The Jews require a sign. The Hebraic people. Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 9. And Moses answered and said, Behold, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. The God of thy fathers. That's the Hebraic line. Okay? If you are descended of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, guess what? You are of the Hebraic line. Okay? All right? All right? And today, that does not guarantee you salvation. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. We have to go, to, in order to be saved, you don't boot the door out of the way. In order to be truly saved, you have to go the way of the cross, the way God has chosen. And you go that way, you are the called, because you went the way of the cross. Okay? But see... People promoting scriptural illiteracy, not searching the scriptures daily, whether these things are so, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and how lifted up they are. You see? And it's getting worse. It's not getting better. I heard this uh, sermon about the face of Jesus by this one guy and I, I listened to it so about a half an hour and it's like after I listened to it it's like and in that sermon he said something about uh, 
the Spirit of God is the one who should do the talking. And it's like, well, that blew it for you, buddy, because what's talking in you is a $100,000 piece of paper on a wall, a degree, the teachings of men. Yea, hath God said is what's speaking through you, not the Spirit of God. Okay? That's a mockery of God. A brother of ours did, uh, did a short video where this comedian, comedian, a woman, was on stage boasting about how she did this and did this, and she's like, Jesus must really love me. She drops and clonks her head uh, because, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. These people are mocking God. These people are mocking God. With their yea hath God said, you can know when the redemption is going to happen. Okay, you're, you're a special. You're chosen because of the color of your skin. Lies, lies, lies. God is not a respecter of persons. Okay? God is not a respecter of persons. Verse 6. And the Lord said further unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it came to pass, if they will not, and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou shalt take out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. All signs. All signs. And we already read, the Jews require a sign. And what are Jews according to Scripture? Those who keep the law. And who was the law given unto? Those of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Hebraic people. So scripturally, the Jews are the Hebraic people that come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not Japheth. Not Ham. Not, not Ham at all, okay? And of course, let's see the epitome of a Jew. Let's see the epitome of Jewishness, if you will, uh, in John chapter 20, okay? Here's the quintessential Jew, right here, okay? <laughs> John 20, verses 24 on to verse 29. After the death, burial, and resurrection, within this dispensation. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples were before, the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Because <laughs> the Jews require a sign. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither my and reach and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless but believing. Uh, by the way, notice how he says hand. Okay? You have a, a yea hath God said thing where people say that the crucifixion, it was through the wrists, okay? The wrist is not the hand, okay? There's a distinction, okay? All right? Whoa, it says hands, it actually means wrist. Uh, no, our Lord was crucified through the hands, okay? A little pet peeve of mine, okay? Then saith he to Thomas, read it again, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Do you realize when you're walking by sight, not by faith, you're being faithless? Do you realize that? That you have to be constantly given visual stimuli in order to believe? Like God's got to pay you off or something? You realize that? 
Verse 28, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and God. Now look at this. There is no evidence here that says that Thomas actually went and put his finger in his hands and touched his side. He didn't say that. Just seeing him again was obviously enough. It doesn't say that in the text, does it? That he did that. Look at this. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, because it gives quite a sign, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Showing this dispensation. Talking, that's a reference onto this dispensation. Signs and wonders were there under the law, yes, because the perfect sacrifice for sins was not given. But as we have already looked at, this dispensation, which began with the death, burial, and resurrection, when he was on the cross, he said, cross, he said, it was finished. Why? Because he made the atonement for sin. It was finished. This, uh, this dispensation began. Okay? Okay? So, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Okay? Can God give you signs today for certain things? Yes, he can. But we are not to operate in them. We are not to live by them. Our faith is not to be fashioned by visual stimuli. But by what we don't see. Because for what a man hopes for, if he see it, what does he hope for? Okay? Like it says in Hebrews chapter 11. Let's go there. Let's go there just to, you know, <laughs> this is this is not some bolts things, but see these people that are coming out more so in droves today. Hebrews eleven verse one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How hard is that? But no. Great is the day of the Lord. The great day of the Lord is near. Mark the messenger. They're all about sight signs. Look at their stuff. All about signs this, signs that. <laughs> Sign of the times, right? Okay, that's what they're all about. Okay, now go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, which we are looking at for our instruction in righteousness. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. This is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. The church of the living God, the body of Christ, is not going to be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? You Christians that get left behind are. This is for the Jews. The Jews whose scriptures identify as the Hebraic people. Okay? Yes, there's that in Esther where people became Jews. Yes, yes, yes. Like I said, uh, what is Jew will be in the description box. If you don't want to watch or go through the scriptures, that's on you, not me. Okay? Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 and verse 46. Watch, therefore. Watch. Spoken before the death, burial, and resurrection, and he's speaking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known and what watch, the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is that faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Now, in context, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection, and he's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? That's what he's talking about. One second, please. Okay, he's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. And see, when we, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, get redeemed, then begins the time of Jacob's trouble. And that is a seven-year period. Okay? That is a seven-year period. And on that, look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. Matthew chapter 25, 
Verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Day or hour. And Matthew chapter 25 is talking about when our Lord comes back down. Okay, Matthew chapter 23 is about the condition before the time of the re, uh, before the time of Jacob's trouble, before the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, Matthew chapter 23 is describing the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 24, the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 25, whoosh, second coming, kingdom of heaven. It's talking about. Okay, but look at that. Don't look at me. Look in the scriptures. Watch, therefore. Okay. They're going to have to be, they're definitely watching during the time of Jacob's trouble. But look at this. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. What's missing there? Oh, and, 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 and Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. What's missing in those? We see day and hour. Year isn't mentioned, is it? Now, this is talking about the second coming. Okay? The second coming. The time of Jacob's trouble is seven years. They're going to know or have a very good guesstimation of the year that the Lord is going to return. Because it's seven years. It's seven years. People want to argue about, well, when does it start? What about the, the grace period of that? Whatever, whatever. But they're going to be able to calculate the year. But they will not know the day or the hour. And this is specifically talking about the second coming, not the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Okay? Not the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? The redemption of the purchased possession is imminent. It's going to happen. When? Nobody knows. Okay? We don't know the year. We don't know the day. Or we don't know the hour. But! But! Once we get redeemed and the time of Jacob's trouble begins, they're not going to be knowing the day or the hour, but they will be able, through Scripture, to guesstimate a what time around what year. Because it's a seven-year period, okay? The days, unless those days be shortened, the Lord talks about that, okay? Yes, the Lord talks about that. Seven years is long enough where he's going to be pouring his wrath upon this earth, okay? This is talking about the second coming, okay? And for us today, we, we're not concerned with the second coming. Why? Because we get redeemed. We come back down with him. Okay? We don't know when the redemption of the purchased possession is going to happen. We don't know the year, day, or hour. Not at all. But once that happens, when the redemption of the purchased possession happens, roughly seven years are going to go, and sometime in that seventh year, our Lord's going to come back with us who went up with him, okay? But they're not going to be able to know the hour or the day, okay? So yes, the second coming is imminent, but there's a few things that have to happen before that, okay? All right? So when you hear people about talking about the his second coming is imminent, uh, well, first, the redemption has to happen, and we don't know when that's going to happen, okay? Okay? And after that, the time of Jacob's trouble, then the second coming, okay? So there are quite a few things that have to happen first before his second coming. See, today you don't have to be concerned with his second coming because the time of Jacob's trouble happens after this dispensation. What you need to be concerned with is, are you a good person? Hmm? Are you a good person? Can you save yourself? Huh? Have you sinned against God? Are you the one who put him on the cross? Did he die because of your personal sins? Huh? Are you a good person? Hmm? Oh, or is it someone else's fault? It's it's the white man that made me do it. Huh? 
Oh, it's the Jesuit who did it. Oh, uh, it's this person taking someone else, uh, blaming someone else for uh, your faults and sins. And then it's like, you you fear Lord, but it's like, oh, I can do better. I can do better. You don't fear the Lord. Hmm? That's what you need to be concerned with. See, these guys, about the second coming. Second coming, it's not going to happen for quite a while yet. Because what happens to happen first? He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay, that's what has to happen first. And we don't know when that's going to happen. Okay? And those two guys are all about that. Well, the first guy, great day of the Lord is near, is trying to guesstimate when the redemption is going to happen. We don't know. We don't know. And this, what we looked at, is specifically, again, is specifically talking about the second coming. Go to Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Okay? Now notice how he says watch. Okay? There's... During the time of Jacob's trouble, those Jews that realize that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is, uh, you know, the devil incarnate in the third rebuilt temple, and they're going to go to the scriptures, and they're going to go to Hebrews and the book of James, because it's going to be faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. The law is going to be reinstituted, okay? It's a different dispensation. No eternal security except for the 144,000 Jews that are sealed. Not Jehos and not tribes of uh, Ham. Okay? It's, or of Japheth. Okay? No. Those of Shem of the Hebraic line. 144,000 Jews are going to be sealed. They're the only ones. Okay? And... The two witnesses, Lord willing, that's going to be one of the next videos coming out about the two witnesses, okay? But there's no eternal security during the time of Jacob's trouble. And see, the, the wicked, easy believism heretics today who say, just believe, once saved, always saved, in every dispensation. Even so come Lord Jesus. <laughs> okay? But look at Mark, now chapter 13, verses 35 on to verse 37. 35 on to verse 37. Again, watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Again, Mark chapter 14, before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, in context to the second coming. Not the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Not the redemption of the... Now, go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. See, during the time of Jacob's trouble, they are going to be visibly looking for the Lord. They, th there's an element of, of faith and works there, yes, but there's an element of sight because signs and wonders are going to be there during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Absolutely, because the Jews require a time. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Israel! Okay? Israel, Jacob, descended of Isaac, descended of Abraham, called out of Shem. Hebrew first appears with Abraham. Okay? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob showing us who the Hebraic people are, who the Jews truly are. Okay? And if you're a kindredist and willfully ignorant and don't want to accept that, go to hell then. Go to hell then. Okay? Sorry. Enough is enough. Pull your head out from betwixt your buttocks. Alright? 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 and 5. Wholesome words. What is this talking about? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 and 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. 
even the wholesome words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Uh, for this, go to what doctrine which is according to godliness. Uh, godliness. Um, Psalm chapter 4. Psalm 4. Psalms don't have chapters. Here, brother. There. Here, sister. There. Okay? See? Even I make mistakes. Psalm 4. Psalms don't have chapters. Ow. <laughs> I deserve that. Okay? Psalm 4. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Hear me when I call, O God, of my of my righteousness. God is our righteousness. Okay? Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself, set apart and godly. Other than that, okay, the Lord will hear when I call, when I call, the Lord will hear when I call unto him. And go to Proverbs, uh, uh, Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Okay? Walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Walketh in the counsel of the ungodly, like the great day of the Lord is near, or Mark the Messenger, or Catholics, or whatever. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and light, night. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Are you, are you reading the scriptures daily? Hmm? Do you read something every day? Or are you too, too busy? Got to move, got to move, right? Or you can't give a half hour unto the Lord? Hmm? But what is Paul talking about? Verse 3 in 1 Timothy chapter 6 again. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Godliness um, being separate other than that. Living according to the scripture for the dispensation that there is that there is of, you know, that we're of. The doctrine which is according to us on uh, this dis dispensation. But you got to remember, all things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. You learn how to fear the Lord reading the Old Testament. You learn how to be saved by reading the Pauline epistles. Okay? For us today. For us today. you got to rightly divide the word of truth. And see, that's what our Lord, that's what Paul is talking about. That's what our Lord is talking about through Paul here. So what I meant to say. Okay? Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 on to verse 13. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 12 on to verse 13. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers, like the great day of the Lord is near and mark the mess, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I bet you that great day of the Lord, uh, the great day of the Lord is near guy, I bet you he believes that he can figure out when the redemption is going to happen. I know that Mark the Messenger really believes that he is an actual Hebraic Jew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And all you deceived disciples of his as well because of the color of your skin. You, you wicked devils. Oh, oh, so wicked, okay? But those who are going to live according to the scriptures are going to suffer persecution, okay? So that's what it is to be godly. Okay, living according to the dictate as our Lord has commanded us for the current dispensation. Okay, by grace through faith, not being conformed to this world. Okay, and some of these guys preach against worldliness, yes, but they don't rightly divide the word of truth. Like Mark the Messenger, he says you've got to keep the commandments. 
Okay? He's against the redemption of the purchased possession. Once saved, always saved. Why? He's against that because he's saving himself by keeping the law. I can say, I could do a hundred videos on this guy. And still, you people uh, are willfully deceived, willfully ignorant. You don't want to hear the truth. Praise the Lord for some of you who do. For those of you who do, you're who I'm talking to. Okay? And I'm spitting on those who don't. Absolutely. I got time for you. Okay? I don't. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. On to verse 16. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit. Words to no, what are the words to no profit? You got to keep the commandments. Teaching, telling people that they have to keep the commandments today. Those are words to no profit. They do not profit you salvifically today, okay? Instruction and in righteousness, yes. There, yes. But salvifically, doctrinally, no, no. We don't keep the law today, okay? That has been gone over numerous times. But a lot of you people don't want to hear that. So, to you, okay? But those are words to no profit, okay? Trying to take... Um, salvation, um, ways to be right, and other dispensations, and make them applicable for us today. Those are words to no profit. Okay? Salvifically. Okay? Yes, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to shew thyself approved unto God. And this is what Mark the Messenger doesn't re, uh, continue with. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane, profane and vain blah, 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 babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. More ungodliness. Okay? So, and also to uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, how one is made right with God within the current dispensation, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, whose righteousness is, that the man of God may be perfect, not sinlessly, but may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We have the perfect word of God right here in the authorized version of the scriptures. This makes us perfect. Not sinlessly perfect. We sin every day. Perfect in heart. Perfect in wisdom. Fear of the Lord. Okay? It's right here in the scriptures. So, the wholesome words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? This thing about watching. Okay, watchers. Oh boy. The Nephilim and that stuff. The link will be in the description box where we talk about that. Okay. But Paul says through the Holy Ghost that um, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Now we have already seen that our Lord said, Watch. Now in context, when he said that, it was for those who are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. But for our instruction and in righteousness, what are we watching out for? We're not, we're not watching for the redemption of the purchased possession. Why? Because it's come up hither. We're going to hear. Okay? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? We're not walking by uh, sight. We're walking by faith. Okay? And we are going to hear, come up hither, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? All right? Not everybody's going to see it. We're going to hear our names, all of us. We're going to hear our names called at the same time. In a moment, in the twinkling of, an, uh, of the eye, uh, there are those who are going to hear thunder. Okay? Scriptures talk about that, and I've shared my opinion on that. Uh, the one part where uh, the Lord speaks, where the Father speaks, 
and some heard the voice and others said it was th uh, thundered. I believe that's how it's going to be for the redemption of the purchased possession. Every single one of us of the Church of the Living God, when we hear come up hither, we're all going to hear our names called at the same time because God can do that. And we're all going to be caught up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Okay. Others, I believe, are going to hear it going to hear thunder, but they're not going to hear God say our name at the same time, okay? All right? It's not going to be a silent redemption. I don't believe that. I don't believe that, you know? Uh, the redemption of the purchased possession, even though there are very few of us, that's going to be something noticeable. And that's when Lucifer, Satan, the old serpent's going to be like, oh boy, here we go, seven years. Okay? Okay? But the wholesome words, our Lord said unto the Jews who are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble, watch, because they're going to be looking for the visible sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds with us who go up with him, who go up, who get redeemed, okay? So they're going to be looking for that. But what are we today to be watching out for? Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. See, yes, Paul talks about watching, but see, the watching that we are doing is not looking for visible signs and wonders and trying to guesstimate when the redemption is going to happen and seven signs this and seven signs that. Oh, it's a sign. Shut up. No. But our Lord said to watch. To watch that, he said, to make sure that when your Lord come, that he does not find you so doing. Doing what? When the Lord calls you up, brother, sister, what are you going to be doing when he calls you up? You're going to be sitting there watching a Hollywood movie? Hmm? You're going to be sitting there smoking a cigarette? How about smoking a joint or a bomb? How about sipping a little of the whiskey, huh? How about playing a video game? How about watching whatever? Hmm? What are you going to be doing when the redemption happens? When he says, come up hither, what is he going to find you doing? See, wholesome words, instruction in righteousness. Do you get it? When Paul said through the Holy Ghost, if anyone consent not to wholesome words for the doctrine according to godliness, being separate other than that, instruction in righteousness. Our Lord said unto the, the Jews who are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble, watch, because they're going to see the visible sign of the Son of Man coming. Paul, I believe, making reference to that. What are we going to watch? What are we watching for today? Signs and wonders? No. We walk by faith, not by sight. But what are we watching for? Acts, not Corinthians, Brad. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 on to verse, uh, where are we? 31. And um, when you do the looking, um, watch, watching, watchers, watch. Um, I believe this is the very first appearance of watch after the death, burial, and resurrection. Watchers, watching and stuff, all Old Testament. Okay, very few appearances of watch appear within the Pauline epistles. But see, the watch that we are commanded to do in this dispensation. And now, there are um, what watch in the night. Any of you who have military experience, experience, the first watch, the second watch, a watch, put a watch out, uh, someone, uh, a guard looking out, surveying the land. Okay, there's that watch, the first watch in the night. There's the watch, uh, the guys who go on the uh, towers to watch out and look for trouble. Okay, and then there's watching, looking out for things. Okay, all right. The watch that we are to do today. Acts 20, verses 28 on to verse 31. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock and, and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. Bingo! The people that we looked at at the beginning of this. 
Okay? Therefore, watch. And remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And by the way, the term watchman does not appear at all in the New Testament. It's all Old Testament. Okay? And after the death, burial, and resurrection, this is the very first appearance of watch, singular. Okay? That's the very first appearance. There is another appearance in Acts chapter 9, which here appears before this, but it is not the singular. Okay? This is the singular. Watch. The very first appearance of any kind of form of watch, which is still, still, after the death, burial, and resurrection, Acts chapter 9, verse uh, 24. And look at, uh, look at the context. Acts chapter 9, verse 24. But their laying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Watched. Actually visible watching. Okay? That's watched. Watched. That's the first appearance after the death, burial, and resurrection of any form of watched. Of watch. But the very first appearance, singular, of watch appears here in Acts chapter 20. Now look at that. Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures, okay? Look here in, in Acts chapter 9. What is that? Verse 24. Again. But their lying await was known of Saul, and they watched, kept their eyes on the gate. Okay? And the watch that Paul admonishes here in Acts chapter 20, verse 31. Okay? Therefore, watch. And remember... That by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So the one they were watching of gate. Here Paul is telling us to watch, to watch out for what? For grievous wolves who are going to enter in among you, not sparing the flock. These sick Jesuit coadjutor devils who want to infiltrate. And the guys like the great day of the Lord is near and Mark the messenger. Okay? That's what we are to watch out for. Okay, but also that's not it. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. See, the watching that Paul is admonishing us to do is not looking in the clouds. Okay? No, but watching out for wolves. Watching out that we don't be taken by every slate of men uh, by philosophy or every wind of doctrine. Watching out that we don't be tempted also. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 on to verse 14. Okay? Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Let all your things be done with Charity. Now look at that. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men be strong. Is he telling us to watch for signs uh, like the blood moon thing that happened a little couple days ago? Or to look on TV to watching for signs and wonders? No. Or seven signs God's doing? No. That's not the watching he's talking about. Be on the lookout for devils, for uh, wolves. You know, watch out for the flock. For your brothers and sisters, for other people, let all things be done with charity, self-sacrifice. I I rue the day that the <laughs> the Lord had me to do that video on that devil, Mark the Messenger, and oh, the people who defend that man are so deceived. I I rue the day that I did it, but the Lord wanted it done. And what am I going to do? Say, no, I could, but I would have paid a heavy price for it. I didn't want to put him in this video because it's going to set him off again. But I'm doing what the Lord has said. Okay? Watching out. Watch out for these devils. Okay? Watch out for these people because these types of people are going to increase more and more and more the closer we get to the redemption of the purchased possession, which Mark the Messenger preaches against. Okay? 
The other guy, he at least preaches uh, for the redemption, but he, he's, he's crazy. Stay away from him. He's teaching people to take their eyes off of the work that the Lord has called them to do and keep their eyes in the clouds or glued on TV. But see, we're not supposed to be ignorant of these things, right? If the Lord, no, we're not supposed to be ignorant, okay? We're not. But, you know, if the Lord wants you to know something, He's going to let you know it. If there's some kind of world event that is significant that you need to know about, the Lord will let you know it. You know, uh, we who have been called to be soldiers, we do not take up the cares or, or concern ourselves with the affairs of this life, but that we may please him who called us to be a soldier. And being a soldier, we're looking out for other people, doing things in charity, self-sacrifice. Okay? All right? Now go to Colossians chapter 4. We're almost done, actually. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 and verse 6. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Yes. With all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. Now look at that. Watch. In the same with thanksgiving. Again, what is the watch that Paul is talking about? To further the gospel. Okay? The watching that we are to do today in this dispensation. It's not looking into the clouds. Or looking on TV to try to decipher. Oh, when is the redemption of the purchased possession going to happen? Or looking for signs that God's going to give us a, our financial breakthrough. Or signs that someone that is around you is this or that. Signs that, no. The watching that we are to be doing is watching out for each other. Watching out for these wolves in sheep's clothing. Watching for moments when the Lord is going to open up a door for you. Okay, That's the watching that we do today in this dispensation. Once we get redeemed... Okay, the Jews are going to be watching the skies and the signs because faith and works, time and Jacob's trouble. They're going to be signs and wonders. Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Okay, and that's what he was talking about uh, doctrinally when he was saying, What I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. In context, he was talking about those Jews who are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. But for our instruction in righteousness, the wholesome words. The watching that we are supposed to be doing today is watching out for each other. Watching for when the door, door will be opened of the Lord. For what? With all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance. To speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom, fear of the Lord. Toward them that are without redeeming the time. Let your... <laughs> I got to remember this myself. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. My earthly father, who was very displeased with the direction I was going, Gave an analogy about uh, he took two crackers and then he opened up the thing and poured salt on which on one of the crackers. And he's like, which one of those crackers would you want? It's like, you know. And right here, it's like seasoned with salt. If you ever eaten a lot of salt, oh, wow, it's bitter. And then it goes down. It's like, Ugh. salt burns. But also salt is a preservative. Salt is used as a preservative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the significance of salt. Lot's wife preserved as a reminder not to look back from what the Lord has called you out of. Salt preserves. Salt burns. Yes. So we are to our speech. What is this? Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you how ye ought to answer every man. 
Now, right there, that doesn't mean that we answer every man up with these foolish questions. How you ought to answer every man. Someone's asking foolish questions, like so many of these disciples of Mark the Messenger do. Um, don't know. It's, it's not our responsibility to answer foolish or unlearned questions. No. We are to give a reason for an answer to a reason for the hope that is in us. Yes. But to answer every question, no, we've already talked about that, okay? But we are to be salty. We are to burn, but also preserve, okay? All right, and of course, uh, I got this in parentheses here. Galatians chapter 3, no, Galatians chapter 6. Like I said, dear deceived, arrogant disciples of Mark the Messenger, Read the book of Galatians. It refutes everything that your little Messiah says. Here's another thing to watch out for. Okay? Again, the watching that Paul admonishes us is not to watch the sky, but this. Brethren, Galatians 6, verses 1 and verse 3. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You know, some of the most arrogant people I've met are these doctors, because the ability to heal, to prescribe witchcraft, sorcery drugs, becomes like a complex in them. Well, I have the ability to heal. I'm godlike. With some of these preachers that have been used of the Lord, it becomes a complex. Well, the Lord has used me. I feel like Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. I've actually known someone who has said that to my face. Makes me want to... Bleh. But see, that's the temptation. These YouTube guys who have all these subscribers and are being used so they think of God, it could become a complex. Well, I'm a righteous guy because look at how God has used me. I'm somebody special. That's what Paul is warning us about. Yes. Yes. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Look at verse 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. I have led so many people to the Lord. Look at my ministry. All the thousands and millions I have helped. You know what? I, I, hope, I hope the Lord's like, <clears throat> kick that, kick you off of that pedestal that you put yourself on, that you don't get a nosebleed riding on your high horse. That's another thing that we got to watch out for. Oh, yeah. And myself, too. The pride. Because we have, we're not called to, we're not there to call. Uh, the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You know, what is what does Mark chapter 2, verse 17 say? Hmm? Okay, this was our Lord, and this is what we are to do, okay, for our instruction in, in righteousness. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay? And with the, especially these Jesuit trained doctor guys and ladies, no, women, excuse me, okay? Their ability to, well, they know what sickness and they can make people feel better. They can prescribe drugs to make you, you go crazy and stuff like that. The ability to heal can become a complex the ability to heal. The ability to heal. The gift to heal can become a complex. The ability that the Lord gives unto those of us who are called into certain positions within the body of Christ can become a complex, which some have fallen for, thinking that there's something. That's another thing that we need to watch out for. Not looking to the sky or looking for seven signs for this. Okay? All right? But again, we're not to be ignorant. No, we're not. But then again, 
the Lord wants us to know something. I, I guess I, I guess I must be a heretic because I believe that if there's something uh, going on that's significant that the Lord will want you to know, I believe he's going to reveal it to you, whether in scripture or whatever it's going to be. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 and verse 6. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Now those of you who are like, oh, oh, it's talking about the day of the Lord. The watch that we are to be doing is watching out that we don't sleep or be drunken, that we don't be carried away with false doctrines, that we don't be carried away with these heresies. That's the watching that we do today. Not stargazing or watching communist or Catholic news network or fake uh, news or something like that. No. No. Looking for signs all about you. What a nervous, nerve-wracking life that must be. See, that's walking by sight, not by faith. And we walk by faith, not by sight. But we are to watch. Watch out for others. Watch out that ourselves don't, you know, pat, pat ourselves on the back. You know, thinking, I'm someone Look at all the people I've led to the Lord. Look at my channel. Look at the views. Look at the subscribers. Blah, 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 blah. That's the watching that we are admonished to do today. Okay? And... Verses 15 on to verse 24. We're in 1 Thessalonians 5. We can't get away from this. Verse 15 on to verse 24. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. And what is good? Okay? Both among yourselves and to all men, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Here's what a person is. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. And 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we will be done. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 8. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, the alive, and the dead, at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. How do you do that? With scriptures. And how do you do that? By rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? For the time will come. <laughs> when they will not endure a sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Like the great day of the Lord is near and mark the message. There are a myriad of these channels on YouTube, by the way. Okay? By the way. If a channel that you come across is only about trying to guess the second coming or signs about this or the, the you know, the, um, the they seen God or the charismatics all about your financial blessings and stuff like that. Stay away from them. Stay away from them. Okay? Stay away from them. 
For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof thy ministry. Look at that context where watch is. Watch all things. Okay? We're not to be ignorant about the sign of the times, of what things are going on. But see, that is not our focus. Okay? Our watch, because, okay, we see this stuff is going on in our peripherals, okay? We see that. But see, we're watching out for others, for the church of the living God, for brethren. We're watching out. We're, uh, we're out there doing the work of an evangelist. Hey, this time, this, this, uh, uh, you know, this time is going to be coming to an end sometime soon. We're going to be getting out of here. You're going to be dull, left to deal with these monsters of Roman Catholicism. Here, can, let us reason. Come, let us reason together, you and I. That's the watching that we're supposed to be doing. And also look here. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions because all those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay? Do the work of an evangelist. Make foolproof thy ministry. Doesn't matter if you're called to do this, pass out tracts, stand on the street, or reading out of the scriptures, or whatever. Do what he has called you to do. The Titanic's going down, sunk by the Jesuits. Okay? The Titanic's going down. The band played on. Okay? Okay? For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is, a, is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me also, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Put that in context, too, with the redemption of the purchase possession. Our time comes. Come up hither. We have fought a good fight. We finished our course. We kept the faith. Brethren, people, look, I, I, I was in this video pretty harsh on those of you who are deceived by Mark the Messenger. Um, I don't repent of that. You, some of you people really need to get smacked upside your head really hard to wake you up to the fact that you're being deceived by a lying devil who's leading you to hell. People, I understand that these guys about the redemption, you know, Campbell a couple of years ago, I, I, I realize that these are getting worse and worse. And these channels that talk about the redemption of the purchased possession who teach kindredism, racism, okay, uh, they're increasing in popularity. Channels that actually teach absolute truth, that speak absolute truth, are becoming fewer and fewer and fewer. I don't trust somebody who's got a channel here on YouTube who calls themselves a Christian that has over what? 50,000 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers? No, no, no. I don't trust someone like that. No. I don't. I don't. Because God is the God of the little guy. We are small and despised. And remember, it's Catholicism that says, well, if God had a church, it would be the biggest one. What God are you talking about? God of the scriptures or the little G God of this world because the little G God of this world does have the biggest church Mr. Rome, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth we know these things have been going on but brethren the time is coming. We need to be aware that they're going to be even getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse to the point where it might not even be profitable to be, keep doing this with all the heresy 
and false out there because people want to have their ears itched and tickled. They want to hear smooth things prophesy deceits. Be on your lookout. Be on guard. Okay? We do not know when the redemption of the purchased possession is going to happen. They will not know the day or the hour of the second coming, but they will be able to guesstimate what year. Because it's going to be in context to a seven-year period. Okay? And yes, the second coming is imminent. But before that happens, we got to get called up first. And then seven years. So that's, it's going to happen, yes. But not for a while yet. Because we don't know when we're going to be caught up. Hopefully today. So That is going to be it for this video. I know those of you, and none of those of you, uh, the sad, deceived disciples of Mark the Mess, uh, you'll only make it within the first 15 minutes, and then you'll see the video of me going off on him, and then you'll do your stupid, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge, oh, you're a racist, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't got time for you. I, you're going to be blocked. I'm going to remove your stuff. I'm going to be blocked. My few um, moderators, you see that? garbage go ahead and do it go ahead and remove their comments go ahead go ahead someone's actually seeking truth okay but don't judge Matthew chapter 7 I'll oh, shut up don't got time for you so anyway that's going to be it got uh, a lot of things to do today going to get this video uploaded thank you for watching this if you do thank you to you our brethren our sisters for all that you have done we love you thank you please pray for us Please continue to pray for us and pray for each other and the brethren. We need each other and we need our prayers. So, thank you. And we will see you in the next video.